So we want to find the magnitude of a plus 2x. We have the two vectors here connected at the tails. Okay. The first thing that we should look at is drawing a representation of a plus 2x. Okay. What is a plus 2x? And really, we just need to show a plus x here, and we can say it's 2x. So if we take a look at a plus x, if we travel a, we start here, we end up here. Wherever you stop with the first, you start with the second. So what could we do with this picture? What could we do to x here to show a plus x? What could we do? What could we do with x? Yeah, we, we could just slide it along here. So we're just taking this and sliding along here because we're going to travel A, then we're going to travel X. Or we could say this is 2X now, if we want to, even though anatomically it doesn't match up for spatial things. I just need to get a visual here of what the picture is going to look like. Okay, here's my A plus X. Now this 100 degrees, once again, as we talked about before, this 100 degrees starts here. When I move this vector over here, this 100 degrees continues to move with it. So if I keep on sliding this over, this 100 degrees, whoops, see, keeps moving with it to when I get to this outside here, I can extend this line and that 100 degrees still stays there. What we want to find is we want to find the resultant vector. Victor. We want to find the result of a plus 2x. Well, the length of a is given to us as a value of 8. And the magnitude of x is given us to a value, given us a value of 3. So x is a value of 3. But if I have 2x, this is a length of then. Because we have 2 times 3, which gives us this value of 6. So we now know the two sides here. We want to find the third side. We know this angle on the outside is 100. So to take this into the internal part of this triangle, just what would be the measure of this angle? 80 degrees. Because we have a linear pair, and linear pairs by postulate are, or by theorem are supplementary. So now what we know is we know the length of these two sides, we know the angle included. So we can set up our law of cosines equation. So set up your law of cosines equation to solve for VR. Jamie, what do you get for VR? Um, 9.15. 9.15. Oh, 
Thursday. One three. One three. All right. I'm deaf in one ear, can't hear out the other. I'm an old man. Give me a break. So we have BR is 9.13 units here. Now what we want to also find is the angle that this forms with our angle A, or our vector A. So we have an alpha value here that we want to find the angle of. Now we can use law of sines or law of cosines. Law of cosines, we don't have to worry about the supplementary angle. Or we can look at our properties here of triangles. Okay, if we look at properties of triangles, I have 6, I have 8, and I have 9.3. 9.3 is my biggest side, which means this here has to be my biggest angle. Biggest side goes across in the biggest angle. So if I want to find this value here, this is the smallest side here, this will be the smallest angle, which guarantees I can use my law of sines because it has to be an acute angle. So I can set up my law of sines. get an alpha value about 40 degrees, 40.3, somewhere in that range. Once again, don't worry about a penny there. We go to the back side. Um, any of those do you want me to use as an example? And did you try and just couldn't quite figure out? Before I just choose. If we take a look at problem number six. Plane travels 200 miles. A bearing of 330 degrees. Then it turns and travels on a bearing of 270. For 180 miles. So once again, we need to get a picture of what's going on here. Once again, as we go into bearing, bearing is a north reference. We are still dealing with the spin of an or of a vector or a line. We're still with the dealing with the spin of the line. But now we start at north, which is zero degrees bearing. So we are going to start up here. Bearing of 330 degrees. That means we're going to take and rotate about the origin 330 degrees. So there's 180, there's 270, so we're going to be up in this area somewhere. This would give us a bearing, a rotation of 330 degrees. And this is 200 miles. At this point, we're going to turn and go on a bearing of 100 or 270 degrees for 180 miles. 
So as I talked about on the previous days, draw another little axis there. That will give you a new north. And this is a way to help you visualize a little bit more and make it through the problem without making too many mistakes with the angles. So we are going to travel on a bearing of 270 degrees. So we need to rotate this. Let's see. 90, 180, and then 270. And we're traveling 180 miles with this. And we want to find the magnitude and direction is if I would go these two vectors, what is my result? Once again, you're given two sides. We want to find the third side. With this, we need to have the included angle. So our included angle, here's our two sides, here's our included angle to find VR. So we need to now use our geometrical skills to be able to, to determine what this angle is. Now, the, when finding this angle, you're going to have to do most of the time in pieces parts, which means if I would take a look, I already have 90 degrees here. So that gives me 90 degrees. What I need to be able to also determine is what's the measure of this angle. And that's the, the, the geometrical puzzle that you have to solve. What's the measure of the small piece have to be? And there's a bunch of ways of being able to look at this. I look at parallel lines uh, and transversals. Um, but I've seen people extend the line down and create a right triangle and, and do different things to be able to find that. They'll, they'll sit there and go, okay, if I would extend this line down, the measure, this is a right angle here. The measure of this angle, if I rotate it 330 degrees, what's the measure of this angle have to be right here? What's the measure of that angle have to be? 60. And they'll say, oh, if that's 60 and that's right, that means this has to be 30 degrees. Or you can think of this as if this is 60 degrees, this has to be 30 degrees. I have parallel lines cut by a transversal alternate interior angles will have to be congruent. If this is 30, then this has to also be 30 up here. So there's a bunch of different ways to skin the proverbial cat. Um, whatever you visualize and see, uh, go with. So if I have 30 degrees here and 90 degrees here, I have a total of 120 degrees with my angle. So now I can set up my law of cosines equation. I know the two sides, the included angle. Set up a law of cosines equation to find VR. And once again, you need to have an angle. Okay, you need to know a direction. If you go back to the original triangle and the original origin, this is the angle that you're going to want to find in the triangle. This alpha value here within the triangle. So set up and solve for VR, and then solve for this little alpha value here.
Savannah, where you get the DR? And that's in miles. Okay, then we can set up our little signs. The nice thing is we already have the obtuse angle there, so we can use our little sign to find alpha. So we have sine of alpha over the 100 and 180. Sine of alpha over 180 is equal to sine of 120 over what we just solved for here. So we can cross multiply, divide, take the inverse sign. Jacob, what do you get for the alpha value? 28.24. Okay, 28.24, 28.2. Once again, if you're off by a penny, don't worry about it. So we have 28.2 degrees. Now, what we want to determine here is what is the bearing of the resultant vector, Victor? which is this amount of rotation from here just to our resultant vector. Well, that's not just 28.2. That is the measure of this angle here. So to find the measure or the amount of angle or amount of rotation we have from here to here, what are we going to have to do? Well, we had an initial bearing of 330, which took us from here all the way to this vector here. That gave us 330. We found this measure right here to be 28.2. Now what we want is just the measure of this rotation from here to here. So what do we have to do with these two values to be able to find just that rotation? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, subtract 28.2 from 60.7. All right, or we could just subtract from 330. We can, we can do either way. We can subtract it from 60 degrees here. Once again, as I talk about angles here, there's more than one way to visualize them. Okay, There's more than one way to visualize. He visualized, I'm going to subtract from 60, which will give me this measure right here, and then add my 270 to it, which is fine. Okay, Or you could take the 330 here and subtract off the 28.2. Either way is going to get you to the same thing, which is 301.8. Just some additional practice. If you have a good idea of what you're doing with these, you know, maybe hit and miss. Do a couple on the front, do maybe a couple on the back. Solutions are also up here. Solutions are also posted.